Greetings. In this video, we'll discuss video number six, PolyShip. Uh, the new tools that we'll be using, or the new techniques really, are the extract and detach. The extract faces method and detach edges method. We'll discuss the differences between those as we detach uh, the wings from our spaceship so that we can have them animate um, independently. The uh, bridge and target weld will be review. They are part of this lesson, but uh, you were introduced to these last week. Um, this is a technique, really. You know how to add edge loops, um, but we'll discuss why and how you add edge loops in order to maintain sharpness when the object is smooth or subdivided. Um, I'll also go into just uh, reminding you that we can transform the components, vertex, edges, and faces, to fine-tune or shape uh, our ship. Um, repositioning the wing's pivot point. So um, changing the pivot point, and then in this case, we're also snapping. So two techniques there, how to move the pivot point or reposition the pivot point. And then also how to use that in conjunction with snapping. Oftentimes in Maya, you want one object or one component to snap exactly to another. So we'll discuss snapping. And then uh, the final new technique is the negative scale. So when we mirror a poly, it is a singular shape. We'd like our wings to be separate so that we can animate them separately. So if we were to mirror, those wings would be connected. Uh, we will use a negative scale mirror method, and I'll explain that in detail, in order uh, that the two wings remain independent and therefore uh, independently animatable. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to hide this. And uh, let's just have a quick review. Um, right, We know that picking a face allows us to extrude. We can non-proportionately scale. Uh, if we, as soon as we click on a cube, we can then proportionately scale. Now, we learned uh, early on that when we're using the extrude tool and we want to have it mirrored onto the other side, we have to manually select it. So we can manually uh, select that, and then when we use the extrude tool, it automatically mirrors. That is different from using symmetry. In fact, let me undo that. If symmetry were on, and this was a common question in the discussion forum, and I hit extrude, right? we don't have that. Uh, we can only uh, move and scale on a single axis. So the technique is extrude with the components manually selected. And then after you've done that, and this was an additional question, we can come back and if we want to fine tune this after we've generated the shape, we can pick a component. Let's say we want um, to rotate these faces. I can pick that face. If I hit the four key, I see that I only have it on one side. But when we come to object X, it updates. And then if we were to say, for instance, rotate, we're getting that uh, mirrored onto the other side. So when we're using the extrude tool, we are shift selecting on both sides. Once we've created the general shape and we want to manipulate the components, we can do it on just one side with symmetry on and it will mirror uh, onto the other side. Now, what we're doing today is um, uh, two new uh, ideas, extract faces and detach edges. So if I wanted to separate this, uh, let's say I wanted to separate this piece uh, from the cube, I can pick the faces that I want to separate. Let me just do this on one side to make it simple. I can pick these faces and under Edit Mesh, there is Extract. And now this shape is separated. So a lot of times you'll want to create an entire model and then break the pieces that you want to be able to animate separately. In this lesson, we want to have the wings animate separately. So we will need to, in this case, uh, if you're able to select the faces, you would extract. Um, oftentimes, I'm undoing that back uh, to the point where it's a single piece, object mode to see that it's a single piece. 
Sometimes it's very difficult to select the faces, and there are other reasons to use detach, but in this case, uh, if it's too difficult to select the faces, you can just pick the edge where you want the detachment to take place. So I could double click here. If we hit the four key, we see that we've got an edge all the way around. And I can go to Edit Mesh, Detach here. Now it's remembered or, or uh, in the computer that this is a single shape with two pieces. So if I were to come back and pick it as object mode, even though I detach that edge, it still registers as a single object. I have one additional set step when I use the detach edges, and that is separate. So I picked a closed edge loop. I went to deta uh, Edit Mesh Detach, and uh, we detached it. And then I had an extra step, which was to come and hit separate. And so we can verify that uh, by uh, moving that out. So extract faces, detach edges, create a simple shape and just practice before you jump uh, into the lesson. Um, I'm going to delete this and we'll talk about our next technique. Um, on those wings, when we smooth it, it becomes too smooth or we're going to imagine that it's too smooth and we like to keep some hard edges. Uh, eventually when we get to the cockpit that'll be similar. You'd like to have maybe more of a hard surface looking cockpit while the body of the ship uh, remains uh, smooth. And um, that's a matter of inserting edges strategically in order to maintain uh, the hardness. So if I look at this uh, cube here and I hit the three key, which is a preview of the smooth or subdivide, right? It's, it's a, a nice round uh, spherical shape. If I wanted to maintain, let's say we wanted to maintain some hard edge here, I can come to multi-cut. Remember that we're not going to use the multi-cut in its default uh, very often this first half of the semester. We're using it for the insert edge loop option, which when we hold down the control key, we see that we get an edge loop parallel to the edge that we're, our cursor is on. And if I put this edge here, let's just uh, put that there, and I hit the three key, you see now uh, we've got a harder edge uh, up there. And if I did it again, I'm hitting the one key to get back. If we wanted a really hard edge, right, or maybe even a several, um, we can see that now. So now that uh, up on top is hard while the bottom remains uh, smooth and soft. So strategically inserting edge loops to maintain hard edges um, in anticipation of the eventual subdivision or smoothing um, is a technique that we'll use on the wings uh, in this lesson. Now, um, moving on, let's talk about um, snapping. So if you look up here, and if you think back to the overview, I just mentioned this, we have grid snapping, curve snapping, and point snapping. It corresponds on the keyboard nicely. The X key on the keyboard is a shortcut for grid snapping. The C on the keyboard, which is right next to it, is a shortcut for curve snapping. You can see if when I hold down the X, I'm tapping the X and we're generating that uh, or executing that. Uh, here I'm hitting the C key for curve snapping and then the V key for vertex or point snapping. So uh, very common workflow, you want objects to be sitting right on top of each other or next to each other, or you want to snap components uh, to each other. Using the X, C, and V keys uh, uh, will allow you to do that. One of the first is, let's say um, we want to grid snap this up on to the ground plane, right? I can hold down the X. Well, actually, my, my shape isn't exactly, let's see. Ah, I put in an odd number here. Uh, so if I had uh, a perfectly scaled two unit cube, uh, I could grid snap that and you see that it's sitting right on the, on the top. I'm holding down the X key and it's snapping to the, the light gray intersection. So that is grid snapping. I'm going to just duplicate that and slide that over. Uh, and if I pick this vertice, for instance, right, I can move it wherever I want. I'm going to reset my move tool. I can move that wherever I want. Let's say I wanted to snap it onto this edge. I'll hold down the C key. Now in this instance, uh, it's in conjunction with the middle mouse button. So I'm holding down the C key and with my middle mouse button, 
I've clicked on this edge, which counts as a curve. So I'm holding down the C key for curve snapping, which includes edges. And uh, I can, uh, with my middle mouse button, snap that. I could snap it here and um, make that follow. Now for vertex snapping, let me move that. I can hold down the V key, and as well, it's the middle mouse button. And you see I snap right to where that vertex is. So grid snapping X, curve snapping C, uh, vertex point snapping V. And remember that curve snapping includes edges. Edges count as a curve. So give that a shot. Um, and, the, and the trick is if, you just hold, if you're just grid snapping, if we want this vertice just to go to a, a grid, we can click and drag. If I want it to snap to an edge, I'll hold down the C key and with my middle mouse button, click and drag. And if I want to hold down, and if I hold down the V key and I want to snap it to a vertex, V key middle mouse button, and it snaps uh, to these vertexes. You see that it's only snapping there. So give that a shot. Create a, a, a couple of uh, primitive objects, primitive cubes in this case. Go into component mode on one of them. See if you can move that component in grid snapping X, curve snapping C, middle mouse button, vertex snapping V middle mouse button. Give that a shot in isolation before we tackle it in the uh, lesson. Now let me mention uh, a little bit, get out of this. Let's make an actual cylinder and I, I want to talk about our, our pivot point. Um, we're going to be moving the pivot point. What is the pivot point? It, it is this um, it is the central location where your transforms take place from. So this is rotating around the center. If I was to move the pivot, um, and we can do that with a keyboard shortcut, some of the lessons uh, ask you to use the home key. The PC is the insert key, and as I've mentioned before, my little keyboard here doesn't even have a home key or an insert key. So the, the alpha uh, shortcut is the D key. So jot that down in your notes, the D key for changing the pivot point. So if I hold down the D key, you see that I get this um, shared manipulator, and I could pull this out here, and then as soon as I let go of the D key, my pivot has changed. Now my rotates out here. I have to hold the D key and pull it way out there. Uh, right, this is now rotating around uh, that. Now if I want to bring it back, uh, I could come up to modify center pivot if you ever want to just get the pivot back into the middle of an object. But let's say we've got this extrusion here. Let's make something more uh, similar to what we'll be working on. So if I were to come and say modify center pivot, it's going to put that in the middle of the overall shape. But let's say we want it to rotate back on the cylinder, which is what we're doing today uh, or in this lesson with the wing. I'm going to hold down the D key, right, which allows me to put that pivot wherever I want. Um, and uh, another caveat for the snapping, we don't want to click on the arrows unless it calls for it. Uh, if I click on the arrow, now I'm limited to snapping on the Y. Uh, here I'd be limited, right? Now my X is yellow. It means that I'm limited to that as well. I would be limited to the Z axis. Click back in the middle so that you see the three colors, green, red, and blue, right? Correspond down here, green, red, and blue. Make sure that you're snapping with all those colors available to you. Um, unless the lesson calls for uh, limiting your axis snapping, this is how you would execute it. I'm holding down the D key, and I'm also going to hold down the C key. And with my middle mouse button, you see I've snapped the pivot here, and I'll just drag it to the center of that cylinder. And then we rotate about that center. So this is a technique we're going to use for our spaceship, uh, our next set of lessons, the robot character. We'll want the arms and the elbows and the knees and the hips and everything to rotate about the center of their axes. And we will have to go in and manually do this. So let me just very quickly review. I'm going to come and say modify center pivot. That puts the pivot where we don't want it. I want to have the pivot right here so that this, um, this shape rotates around. So the D key allows me to move the pivot, reposition the pivot, I should say. 
And then the C key allows me to snap. And with my middle mouse button, I can click on the edge, a curve or an edge. Edge counts as a curve. And I'll slide that to the middle. I can't slide it anymore. It's smack dab in the middle. Uh, I can let up. And now when I rotate, uh, it rotates uh, around there. All right, so that is repositioning the pivot. And then uh, the final new technique. So let's get rid of this shape and um, negative scale mirroring. If we have a poly and we cut it in one half and we work on one half of it and we mirror it, that poly is a singular shape. Uh, in this case, we're going to model out a wing that's separate. If we were to mirror that wing, we'd have the wing on the other side, but the two wings would be attached. Uh, they would be a singular object. Now, we could uh, detach them or extract them, but I wanted to show you another technique, which we'll use throughout the semester when we want an object to remain separate, but we need it on the other side. Say, for instance, your robot arm. You model out your robot arm separate from the body. You want it on the other side, and so we'll use this negative uh, scale method. Let me explain really what we're doing here. I'm going to create an asymmetrical shape so we can see this. Uh, or, or, yeah, we'll oops, uh, hit extrude, and let's say we just make, make a quick uh, shape like this. Now, the pivot for this shape is uh, at the center of the object. I'm going to put the pivot uh, at the origin. And a quick way to do that is to just group the object to itself. So if I say Edit Group, right? I don't have multiple objects selected. I've just got the one cube. I grouped it to itself. It's given it a brand new transform. And we use this technique, uh, again, throughout the semester of giving uh, 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 grouping an object to itself in order to have a brand new transform, a clean brand new transform. Um, but let's check this out. If, if I come to channel box and let's say we make this all 0.5. Now that makes sense. It's half the size, but it's drawn towards, it's pulled towards its pivot. Let's say we make it 0.25. So now it's a quarter of the size and it's uh, a quarter of the distance from its own pivot. And I could go, and if we made it zero, obviously, it's infinitely small sitting at the origin. But watch, if I put negative 0.25 here, it's come out upside down and backwards relative to its initial position. So you can see when we scale down to zero uh, and we get negatives, it's flipped on all three axes. Uh, it's a perfect uh, mirror on all three axes with the negative. So again, if I put this all at one, here it is sitting out there. And if I make this negative one, it's upside down backwards. It's reversed on all three axes. So what if we only do it on one? If I just come and put negative one, now it's only flipped on that axis. And I can duplicate that. So I'm going to come and say, edit, duplicate, and special. I believe this is the first time we've used this in uh, the semester. We'll open this. Out of good habit, I'll hit reset. And on the X scale, not translate, translate would simply be moving it. A uh, very common mistake uh, at this point in the semester for students to input the number in the translate. We're not talking about translating the object, we're talking about a scale with a negative. So this is across the X axis, I'll hit duplicate special, and you see that we've got it mirrored only on the X axis uh, onto the other side. So anytime we want to have an object, and again, the next we'll be doing it with the wing, and when we get to the robot, we'll be doing it with the arms and the legs. We can group it, put a negative across the axis that we want to flip or mirror it, a negative one in this case in the X scale of the duplicate special dialog box, and uh, we have that there perfectly mirrored, but they're still separate. And um, because we use the groups just temporarily, I can come and pick those two groups and just ungroup them. And now I just have the polys by themselves. So those are the new techniques that we'll be in, uh, executing. Let's uh, jump into the lesson. I'm going to bring my poly ship back. And the first thing, let's, let's look at extracting. So in this case, 
it's easy to select all the faces that we want to be separate. So the extract method would, would work perfectly fine. Edit Mesh, uh, all the way down to Extract. And now when I grab my Move tool and pick that wing, you oh, let me get into Object Mode, pick that wing, and slide it out. Uh, it's separate. And we're going to make these wings kind of rotate up or rotate back. So we want them to be separate objects. Um, I'm going to hit Undo just to get back to the whole shape. I think that was four times. And um, let me demonstrate here. It would be a, a chore to get all the faces of just, let's say we were extracting or we wanted to uh, detach, separate this kind of jet piece here. Um, selecting those faces would be difficult. So in this instance, uh, picking, double clicking, or excuse me, uh, manually selecting the edges around. So I use the shift key, I picked all four of those edges, it's a closed edge loop. So in this case the alternative method where we detach uh, would be simpler because it, uh, drawing a bounding box selection of the faces wasn't nearly as practical as when we wanted to get the whole wing. So I'll hit detach. Now in this method there's one extra step in that we have to separate and we have to jump back to object mode and then hit separate. And now we've separated that jet type piece. So, uh, right, if you want to practice that in isolation, create a cube, just extrude out some pieces, practice selecting the faces and extracting, practice selecting a, a closed edge loop and detaching and just remember you want to go back to com uh, object mode and hit separate when you use the detach edges um, mode or, or workflow. I'm going to hit undo a few times just to get that back and uh, I'll just use the extract method. So I've got all those faces, edit mesh, um, all the way down to extract. Now I could put this on a layer and uh, hide it in the video I'm just introducing you to um, the hide selection method or the hide unused, uh, unselected objects. There are always multiple ways to do things in Maya and there are instances when one may be preferred over the other. And in these lessons, a lot of times I'll do something that may not be the most efficient just to introduce you uh, to a particular uh, idea. Uh, so in this case, I'm just gonna say hide selection. We're going to create a cylinder. We're going to make it uh, 9 and uh, on the Z, just as you did to create this kind of jet piece here. Uh, and I'm going to jump into the orthographic view and we'll position this. And we want to put some edge loops. So I'll come to multi-cut, right? I've got the control key, click with the left mouse button, control key, click with the left mouse button. And then I want to make sure that these are facing each other. If I look straight down the front view, I can see that this isn't parallel. And so putting a 20 in the Z rotates it 20 degrees, and now these are facing each other. I'm also going to make it just a little bit larger. Okay, so this is a bit of a review in that um, we know that we can bridge or weld. So let me just review that real quick. I could delete that and we want to, right, these are separate shapes. Uh, in order to use the bridge or weld, uh, they need to be a singular mesh. So I'll select them both and just hit combine. I'll double click this edge, shift, double click this edge, hit bridge. And now it's a singular shape without a gap but um, I'm going to imagine we don't like this kind of extra shape in there, so I'll just hit undo. We'll jump into the vertex mode, and we'll use target weld with target. So I just click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. So now we have a, a singular shape, and uh, we'll be able to rotate, and we'll eventually put the pivot right here so that it can uh, rotate up and down. Now, this is the idea where we're adding edges for sharpness. This is really a concept, not a tool. We'll use the insert edge loop to give ourselves additional edges, but we're strategically placing those so that when we ultimately smooth or subdivide the wing, 
um, it's not as rounded. So if I hit the three key, um, right, this is uh, kind of too soft and this is too soft. We can see that the edges are pulling. Anytime you see faceting like this on an edge, you know that you don't have enough information there. Um, and we'll talk about this idea of good topology throughout the semester. But what I'm going to come and do with my multi-cut, uh, right, I'm using my control key to jump into the insert edge loop. I'm not doing any snapping. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. That looks like about 10, 10%. But I'll just eyeball it, click it, put one down here, put one here, and one here. And now when we hit the three key, right, those hard edges are maintained. And we just have this nice, uh, smooth, what you might think of as a, a fillet uh, or bevel um, uh, rotated around. So we just inserted four additional edges, and it makes the shape, um, uh, it allows the shape to maintain some hardness, but still transition. And the note, uh, the edges that you see, there's not a lot of bending or faceting. So there's sufficient um, topology here uh, to define this shape cleanly. Now let's talk about moving um, the pivot. Uh, I may do this later in the video, but uh, while I'm thinking of it here, right, I can hit the D key. Uh, let's first review. My pivot's in the middle of the wing. I want my wing to be rotating from this, uh, what we'll think of as like a hinge uh, for my wing. But currently the pivot point is in the middle. So I'm gonna hit undo. If I hit the D key, right, we can put the pivot wherever we want. Let's say we put that pivot way out there. Now the wing is uh, pivoting from that position. But I want the pivot to be right in the middle of this cylinder so that when it rotates, the cylinder is rotating around a central axis. Um, in our robot lessons, we're going to use this technique uh, quite a bit. So it's, it's a good warm up and it's a good, um, good time to practice and make sure that you understand it. Now if I hold down the D key and just kind of try and place it there, I'm never going to get it, or I would be very lucky to get it right in the center. So that's why we need to use the snapping method. I'm going to hold down the D key, C key. I'm going to use my middle mouse button. Now, the tendency of introductory students is to come over here and touch this and try to grab it. Don't touch the pivot itself. You want to touch what you're snapping to. Let me say that again. Don't come over here and touch this. Again, I can see all three uh, colors, green, blue, and red. And if you come and touch it, you might activate one of those, and then you're locked in um, to a particular axis direction. I want to be able to move in all three axis directions. So I want to make sure that I see those colors. Uh, so don't touch it. I'm holding down the D key. The D key allows us to reposition the pivot. Holding down the C key, this allows us to curve snap with my middle mouse button. And I'm going to click on this edge, which counts as a curve. And I'm going to click and drag. So you see I'm stuck on that edge. And I'll push it uh, to the middle. One other thing, I probably want to be in the one mode. Uh, I noticed there, right, when I uh, hold down the C key and slide it down, push it up. So I'm pushing it right to the middle. I can't push it anymore. That means I'm at the center. And then I'll let go. Oops. My, my mouse got stuck. So there we have it. The... Pivot is at the center of that, and now you see when we, uh, if we want our wings down or we want our wings up, it's rotating, I'll hit the three key, it's rotating about that central pivot. So this is a very important concept or technique, and uh, you'll employ it often, um, and we're going to use it in this lesson, and we're going to use it in our uh, upcoming robot lessons as well. So I'm going to review just one more time on that. I'm going to say modify center pivot just to get it back to where it was, right? Just to review, if I rotate that, it's rotating about the center. I can hold down the D key and put the pivot wherever I want. If I put the pivot there, now it's uh, executing from there. I want to put the pivot right here. And so I'm going to hold down the D key, C key, middle mouse button. Oops, excuse me. D key, C key, middle mouse button, click and drag. I'm going to hit undo. I could also hit the D key and the V key. It's a little bit, uh, well, maybe it's not harder. You could also just snap right, oops, I missed it there, snap right to that vertex. And probably better to be doing this in the one mode. So now I've got that pivot right in the middle. All right, let's bring our ship back. And uh, we'll put this wing out a little bit. 
And we can go ahead uh, and just delete the other half. We know we can see now that we've, we're, we're working over here. We no longer need this wing. Uh, and so we'll just grab, uh, I'm in the orthographic top view, and I'll hit delete. In the uh, videos, I missed this little piece and had to come in and delete it. You might want to take a look. Make sure you didn't over-select, right? Select, make sure you didn't select onto the side that you want to keep. And make sure that you got rid of everything on the side that you're deleting. And this should leave you with just a, a straight a straight line there. Now, this was, uh, uh, I created this particular lesson based on the questions that I got last uh, week. And one of those was uh, reshaping. Right, uh, I can just come and grab this and scale it down, scale it in, and make any kind of changes I want to the overall shape. I could come and grab this, and maybe we wanted that flared out, right? Or, I don't know, flared in, or maybe you wanted it flared up or flared down. Uh, so you can come in and pick the vertices and transform the, the vertexes. Uh, you can transform faces, edges, or vertexes. Um, for this kind of sculptural, uh, picking the vertexes is, is typically what you want. So I'm going to grab those, and I just want to make sure that it kind of fits in here. We're going to insert this. Uh, so I'll just make it uh, fit about there. I'll pull it in. We want it to kind of be sitting there. Now I'm getting clipping, so let's tackle that. I'm going to hide uh, the selection this time. And I'll come and I'll just grab this edge and I'll, I'll scale it up. Let me, this is how I do it in the video and this will be perfectly acceptable uh, when you do it. Let me just mention one thing because we're going to be doing some more sophisticated snapping when we get into our, our uh, next set of lessons. Let's say we wanted this to perfectly match uh, that edge. The way that I would do that is to grab the vertex and uh, I want to make sure that I see all three colors, so I'm clicking it in the middle. And um, uh, I want to snap to this position. Now, if I just hold down the V key and click, it's snapped over there. But I only want to snap it on the Y. I only want to change the Y position. So I'll click here. And now if I hold down the V key and with my middle mouse button snap, you see that it's snapped in line. I'll do the same thing down here. The Y is selected. V key, middle mouse button, and now uh, those are perfectly snapped. I didn't do that in the lesson because that's a little bit, um, kind of a little bit, a little bit of a, a middle of the semester technique, but I'll introduce you to it here. Uh, in the lesson, uh, we just grabbed the edge and scaled it up. And then uh, a little bit of a review here. Some of you were having some difficulty still kind of wrapping your head around the extrude. So uh, I've just added this little section here. We'll pull that out, hit extrude. Um, uh, I'll hit the world space, right? Scale that in, extrude, pull that in. So remember that little switch there. Let me go back and do that again. Uh, I Let's go all the way back. So uh, double click this edge, hit extrude, pull it out. Now when I hit extrude, I want to uh, use world space. So I'm clicking the little switch there. Now I'm in world space. Click the cube, get the central cube, scale that down, scale that out. Now I'm going to do that again and just show you one other technique. I didn't use this in the video, but you can. Um, and not too early to introduce you to it. The extrude, I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to hit extrude. I'm going to hit world space. And rather than using the cubes, uh, I can use offset. Um, and then we can uh, scale that down uh, if you wanted a, a shape like that. So if you want to be very precise with those numbers, uh, you can do that. I'm going to scale that down. And we'll hit extrude, world space, scale that down and in, and then extrude. And I'll just pull that back. And if we hit the three key, um, we'll see our next task. So we started talking about when an object is too soft and we want to have something maintain uh, hardness. On the wing, we inserted uh, four additional edge loops and that maintained the uh, sharp edges where we wanted. We're gonna do the same thing here. I'm going to use the uh, multi-cut. I'm gonna make sure that my snap step is 50. I'm gonna hold down the control key and the shift key and click 
in the middle of the top, shift key, control key, click in the back, shift key, control key, click on the bottom, shift key, control key, click on the front side. And now when I hit the three key, you can see, and I'm gonna hide my grid there, uh, you can see that this uh, will fit that cylinder. It's less soft, it's less like an oval, um, right? And it's more rectangular with just some rounded edges. I could also come in here and if I wanted to grab uh, those vertexes, hit the four key to make sure I've only got those selected. And I could pull those down if I wanted to make it even more square. Uh, yeah, and you can manipulate those vertexes, but for now, let's just leave it about uh, about here. Uh, I'll come and we'll say display, transform, uh, excuse me, display, show all. And I'm just going to pull out my uh, wing a little bit here and come back and grab these vertexes. And we'll just scale that down to fit. And our pivot is still there. Oops. Well, I lost my pivot where we had it. So let's let's just review that again. I'm gonna hide hide unselected objects. I'm gonna hit the D key, hold down the C key. I'm gonna do this in the one mode, and with my middle mouse button, I'll click and drag. And we can see that that's in the proper place. We'll bring back. And there, it's fit in there nicely, and we can imagine that our wing is now able to articulate. We can mirror this uh, over. We'll just mirror the body. Uh, I want to just come in and the merge threshold put 0 0.01. This will make more sense, especially when we're doing organic shapes, and you have a tendency for the vertexes to be short or over. Um, merge threshold allows you to solve that. Um, but for something that's uh, very uh, straight down the middle uh, of this type of shape, just using a merge threshold of 0 0.01 will make sure that all those vertices are closed and welded. And then here was our technique. I, let me just show you. If I came to mesh mirror, we'd get the wing on the other side, but they're, they're a singular piece. And I wouldn't, right, I, I'm not able to uh, solve that independently. So I'm going to hit undo, and we'll use this other method where we uh, group the object to itself. So I've got the wing grouped to itself, and we'll open duplicate special. I'm gonna hit reset out of good habit, and we remember we put negative one, duplicate, now it's on to the uh, other side. And what we'll finally do is clean this all up. So I'm gonna come and delete all my history, Delete all by type history. And then um, let's see what is what. So here's an extra node that we don't need. I'll hit delete. And then I'm holding, uh, clicking the little plus to open those. And with my uh, command key, uh, I can skip select. If I, if I hold down the shift key, I get everything in between. Uh, I just want to select the group nodes, these group nodes, not the poly mesh nodes but the, uh, these group nodes with a little red arrow. And we'll just come to edit, ungroup. And now uh, we have our spaceship uh, with a little wing, uh, with the wing and a hinge that fits in there separate uh, on both sides. Um, we've added some edge loops uh, to maintain sharp, uh, harder edges when we uh, smooth preview for ultimate subdivision. In upcoming lessons, we will rig this and animate it. Uh, the beginning of the next, uh, the beginning of the lab uh, tutorial uh, shows you a little uh, animation of the spaceship uh, taking off, and uh, we'll jump into that in the upcoming weeks. All right, questions in the discussion forum. Uh, have a good one.